Hey, what's up? I hope you're doing super well. I hope you're out there absolutely crushing it this week. Happy Monday to you. I want you to imagine something. Imagine that you get fined $5,000 as a real estate agent just for doing nothing more than carrying out your client's wishes because that's exactly what the argument is concerning ours clear cooperation policy, which actually forces you to put every single listing into MLS within one business day. You know, there's been a lot of argument from both sides. Today, I want to talk about different scenarios, right? Different scenarios that that could come about um, that 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 could could pose a potential for you to break state laws, right? To break state laws. I want to talk about also um, why it's a good thing, right? I want to talk about both sides of this and I want to get your thoughts. Before I get into it, let me ask you this. Have you have you ever had a client that wanted you to list their property, you know, wanted you to be the exclusive agent, wanted you to handle everything just as you would uh, any other time? The only difference is they did not want it to be public. They did not want it to be on MLS. And it was a legit reason. OK, have you ever ran into that? And how did you handle it? I would love to hear in the comments exactly uh, you know, what you did concerning this, right? Because if you listen to your client, and you don't do it at this point, then you're going against the policy, right? And you could potentially be fined. Um, but you know, but, and then if you put it on MLS, because that's what, you know, th the way that it's written now, so what we have to do. So you see the conflict, right? You see the conflict. And I want to go through both sides here. I want to run through some scenarios with you. And I also want to let you know that Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, so 2 p.m. Central, I'm going to be live right here on YouTube and I'm going to go deep and I'm going to teach you how to never lose another listing again. If you love my last few weeks of YouTube lives, um, you're going to love this one because I'm going to go extremely deep. It's going to be a mind twister. It's going to there's going to be tons of golden nuggets and ahas. It's going to transform your business. So subscribe, hit the bell, do all that good stuff and tune in because I'm excited to teach you how to never lose another listing again. Let's dive in here to this article here. This is uh, from Inman um, Refkin. NAR clear cooperation breaks ethics uh, state laws, right? And challenging the, NAR, the National Association of Realtors clear cooperation policy, Robert Refkin writes, um, realtors are upholding their highest moral and ethical and legal duties to serve clients. And what's interesting about this article is it was it was written by none other than Robert Repkin. All right. So basically, you know, the clear cooperation policy, right? It was put in place to enhance transparency by mandating that listings be submitted within one business day to MLS, which gets syndicated everywhere, right? Gets syndicated to all the sites and everybody sees everything in one spot. Right. He also says that it's clear to see why it's easy to argue. Um, why it has some benefits, right? But those benefits, they don't compare at all to the negatives, right? The restrictions it places on homeowners, uh, consumer choice and agents' obligations, right? Um, basically, anytime a homeowner wants to market their property off MLS, then the realtor or the realtors are forced to compromise their ethical uh, foundations upon which the profession was built. Right. And their obligations under state laws concerning privacy and fiduciary duty. Um, prior to the enactment of the policy in 2020, agents had the freedom to publicly market their properties per their clients with wishes without risk of violating uh, any ethic rules or state laws. Um, there's a moral responsibility for all realtors to abide by the code of ethics ensuring that they protect and promote their client's best interest. However, there's an equally important obligation to challenge policies that conflict with those ethical standards. He's basically saying that you can't ethically give your client fiduciary duty and, you know, put in every single situation, you know, some clients don't want their property on MLS. So if they don't, right, then, then, then there's a conflict there is, is what his argument is. So, and, and a lot of people, a lot of people argue that he's only saying this because he has a huge in-house MLS portal and that this would help his situation where he could have a lot of listings that would only be able to be viewed through his portal. So people say that he has ulterior motives here. Robert, if you're watching, if you're listening, would love to have you on the show. I have a huge platform. Um, you guys know I have a huge microphone. Would love to have you on and, and hear this, hear this from yourself. 
Um, yeah, by complying blindly with the clear cooperation policies, realtors risk perpetuating policies that may do more harm than good. And therefore, it's an ethical imperative to challenge such policies. Right. And so here's some examples. OK, Article one, protecting clients interest. Right. When representing a buyer, seller, or landlord, tenant or other client as an agent, realtors pledge themselves to protect and promote the interests of their client. Right. This is something that's in the code of ethics. So basically he's taking he's taking um, parts of the code of ethics. and He's saying how the clear cooperation policy conflicts. So the confliction there with um, pledge to, to themselves to protect and promote the interests of their client is. Uh, it forces realtors to comply with MLS mandated rules, even when they conflict with the first sentence of the first article of the Code of Ethics. Clear cooperation uh, can require realtors to act against their client's best interest when clients want to market their homes publicly for more than one day without placing them on, on MLS. So so marketing their homes publicly. Right. So I guess like on a sign, you know, having a sign in other places for more than one day without placing them on MLS. The assumption that every client desires maximum exposure for the listing is mistaken. So I guess the question there, Robert, by saying that, are you saying that putting it on MLS gives maximum exposure? Uh, many clients don't believe that more exposure equals a higher price. Okay, that's interesting. If more exposure equals higher price, why do home builders build hundreds of thousands of homes off MLS every year? If more exposure equals higher price, why do hundreds of thousands of companies not sell their products on Amazon, uh, where they're uh, where where's the most ex most exposure? Okay, so interesting arguments. Um, why do home builders sell hundreds of thousands of homes off MLS each year? Well, these are two arguments. I think it's not really apples to apples. You know, home builders. Everybody knows they're building homes, they're building new homes, they're building a ton of homes. So people, you know, are going to go to the builders versus if you're one house, if you're one person, how do they actually know you're for sale? Everybody knows that builders are building homes to sell them versus an individual selling a home. You don't actually know that they're selling unless you figured it out some way through marketing and exposure. Uh, not arguing against what he's saying. I'm just trying to look at it from all perspectives here. And I don't know what I mean. I guess the, uh, why are you bringing up Amazon? Okay, some clients care more about privacy than price. I, I can agree there. They shouldn't be forced to surrender their privacy to sell their home, right? Some clients care, like some clients care about privacy more than price. Some clients don't even care if it sells. Some clients don't even care if it sells. Um, examples. Let's see where are we examples where the client may not want to market on MLS. A family member is seriously ill and the family wishes to maintain privacy to avoid additional stress. OK, a couple going through divorce prefers to avoid public attention until their affairs are settled. An individual is moving uh, for a confidential job opportunity. The property is undergoing recommended improvements. The owner wants feedback on how the improvements may impact sales price before showcasing it to potential buyers. Sellers want to test the asking price privately without accumulating unnecessary days on the market. Okay. Those are all legit situations, I would say. Okay. In these instances, realtors must question whether complying with the clear cooperation policy is truly in line with their ethical responsibilities. Realtors must balance marketing and cooperation on the MLS with the duty to prioritize their client's best interests. When these two priorities conflict, clients' interests must precede MLS policy. Moreover, state law says a seller's agent has without limitation the following fiduciary duties to the seller. Reasonable care, undivided loyalty, confidentiality, full disclosure, obedience, and duty to account. Clear cooperation is forcing agents to break the law fiduciary duty by forcing them to push their clients to list in the MLS, even if their clients believe that marketing outside the MLS will result in higher price or desired privacy. Furthermore, it damages the relationship between agents and MLS, finding them up to 5,000 for doing what their clients ask. The clear cooperation policy should be removed so that NAR ethics, uh, ethical rules can provide more flexibility to account for a wide variety of clients' interests when marketing their homes. All right. Um, situation number two, Article 3, cooperating with other brokers. Realtors shall cooperate with other brokers except when cooperation is not in the client's best interest. Okay. 
Let's read it again. Realtors shall cooperate with other brokers, okay, except when cooperation is not in the client's best interest. The conflict. While promoting cooperation, the clear cooperation policy does not account for situations where the client believes that sharing their listings on the MLS to all realtors could harm their confidentiality. Examples. The sale involves sensitive family legal arrangements. An estate sale involves parties not ready to acknowledge the sale publicly. High-profile clients and law enforcement officers, uh, officials need discretion due to privacy concerns related to their security or public image, movie stars, etc. Realtors must balance cooperation with the duty to prioritize their clients' best interests. When these two parties conflict, clients must interest must take precedence. Okay. Standard of practice one through nine client confidentiality. Realtors shall not knowingly use confidential, uh, confident, confidential information of clients to disadvantage, uh, to the disadvantage of clients or use confidential information of clients for the realtors advantage or the advantage of third parties, unless clients consent after full disclosure conflict. They can be easily argued, uh, by homeowners under state laws, that information they deem confidential is being used to take advantage uh, of the MLS, a third party that sells their data, and that the clear cooperation policy limits the homeowner's ability to provide explicit and informed consent to use such information. Um, state laws in many states consider home address and photos confidential information, right? And it states the different acts and states. Moreover, under, state, under law such as the CCPA, and the MLS must have a do not sell my personal information link to allow customers to exercise this right. Okay, so he's going over, you know, private privacy information, which many states consider photos and address um, private confidential information. Um, it's crucial to preserve client confidentiality. While rooted in a desire to improve transparency, the policy can inadvertently lead realtors to breach the code of ethics. NAR. Okay. Okay. Cool. So he, he went he went through a couple of different scenarios there. Went through a couple of different scenarios. My question to you is, what do you think? Okay. And and not that it matters in the whole scheme of things. We're going to go out here and crush it regardless. Let me make that clear. the The reason why I'm bringing all this up is because these little things will affect our day to day, how we're going to operate. And, and what I find interesting and the, the big reason why I bring stuff like this up is because NAR, NAR is NAR did meet, I believe last week, I believe NAR met to talk about this. I, I can't wait to hear what they said about this. I will report that as soon as I get it, but here's why I'm really bringing all this up because if they do away with it, there's going to be massive opportunity for you as a real estate agent. There's going to be massive opportunity the uh, you know if they leave it right either way it goes there's massive opportunity but you need to know what's happening so that you can take advantage of which way it's going to go it's not going to do away with this it's not going to keep this um either way it goes you win but you need to know so that you can decide how you're going to win like how you're going to structure it what the strategy is going to be for you to go out there and absolutely crush it so the other side of this is that all the, the, the homes are in one location, right? They're in one spot. Basically, let's just call it like it is Zillow, right? They're all in Zillow for the public to see. You know, you got homes.com, you got different things, but Zillow's the big one, right? And, and so you can go and you can see everything for sale, everything for sale. You don't have to, like I say, know the secret password to get into the Facebook group, to see the thing, to know somebody, right? It's all out there in the open. That way, every buyer has the same opportunity to buy any home that's for sale. I like that myself. I like that. I, I see both sides of it. I'm not swaying one way or another on this. I like that it's in one spot. I think it's great for buyers. Um, and I like all the data being, being all together and nicely organized on the other side. I, I see the, 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 if you have clients that do not want it to be there, how this could break potential, you know, codes of ethics and rules and regulations and how we could get fined and how that could be a potential issue. I see both sides of it. Um, it doesn't matter to me which way we go. Um, and, and it's really a catch 22 because I love having all the data in one spot and I love 
having things off market right because <laughs> like if it's off market I'm, I'm just telling i'm just telling you that's going to benefit i believe the agents more than anything i think i think keeping all the data in one spot and having a, a portal for all the buyers to see everything for sale is going to more help the buyers and the sellers, because more exposure, you find the highest qualified buyers want to pay the most money. And then if if we go the other route, I think it's going to lean towards benefiting agents more than customers. My opinion, my opinion, and I'm, I'm, I'm and I'm not saying that I'm right. I just think that it leans towards consumers if you keep it. I think it leans towards agents and brokers if you get rid of it. Who knows? Maybe this will be another catch twenty two. What I mean by that is the lawsuit that the big commission lawsuit that was won. To me, it comes down to the fact that the way that business was was best for consumers. And however, technically, there's a technicality that it was breaking antitrust law, a technicality. But the way that it was, in my opinion, was best for consumers because everyone had representation. And commissions have always been negotiable. I think adding a few more disclosures and, and making it more well known that this negotiable would have been taking it far enough. They went so far the other way. Okay, whatever. We'll still go out here and, and help people buy and sell property. Could this be the same thing, a Cash 22, where you know um, it's, it's best for consumers, but yet it's breaking some kind of antitrust rule of some sorts, right? Not a lawyer, have no idea. I'm just saying, could this be another one? <laughs> another one? Could it be another one? Anyway, um, that's it for today. Tune in Wednesday. I'm going to teach you how to never lose another listing again. I'm going to put a video right here from uh, my last live, which you're going to absolutely love. Hit that bell. Hit subscribe. Let me know what in the world I could do to help you. I'm still answering every single DM on Instagram, at Ricky Carruth, and I'll see you on the next video. Let's go.